That was a bit of an ordeal. Have a look here. You guys see the trailer on back here, the bobsleigh? Because it's in two pieces, you can't exactly back it up too easily. And so I tried to weave my way through the woods there. But anyways, we made it. So what you see before you, if you haven't been here before, is a bobsleigh. This thing I more or less restored by taking off the old paint, stripping it down, checking all the hardware and repainting it. This thing is what we're going to put the slab wood on in order to take back to that trail. This thing here has some articulating or uh, spinning rather top sections that allows me to turn corners and has the, uh, the material that's on there track real well. I put those uh, metal sides on it you see here. These are fence posts. I put them on it over top of this square tubing in order to provide support. Just uh, depending on how high we get the slabs, I don't want them falling off the sides. So this thing is what we're going to load up the slab wood with, which is right there. I'll cut it up in just a minute into halves, load it on here. Then we'll take it back to that trail and throw it down. Now, some of this stuff here is probably going to be very small, not worth taking back to the trail. In that case, I'll just throw it on the ground for now. Where I'm standing, I still have to get in with the tractor, get this area cleared out. The reason I didn't do it today is I just didn't get around to it. You saw some of the other trails done, but I didn't get to this one yet. I'll be doing that very soon. Now, some of you are probably going to say, why don't you just get in here with your forks, pick the whole unit up with the tractor, load it on here. And I did consider that. The only trouble with that is I'm one man and I need two men or two people in order to get both pieces of equipment out here, the tractor as well as the snow machine. I didn't want to have to bring the tractor out here, park it, walk all the way back to my shop, get my snow machine and drive it out here just so that I could uh, make it easier on myself for loading it. I figured if going to all that hassle of walking back and forth to get two pieces of equipment, I might as well just put it on here by hand. There's not a ton there anyways. Not to mention, because the snow's so deep here, it'd be kind of hard to maneuver with the tractor. So figured I'd just uh, cut it up by hand, load it by hand, see how we make out. I'll probably make more than one trip here. As you saw, the sleigh went through that trail without problem, as did the machine. But because it was my first time through this winter, and because it's not packed, I don't want to load this thing right down despite the fact that the Scandic would probably pull it. I don't want to load it down and then get in that trail and have the trailer get buried. Uh, so what we're going to do is probably make a few trips. But anyways, that's that. If you look back here, the sawmill's still doing real well in here. Got a bit of blowing snow that came in the back, but that's to be expected. We'll be back out here very soon because I got some fresh logs in the log deck just on the other side of that front tarp. And I'm just going to back up just a little bit because you guys can see some fresh snow on the roof and... Well, as the days get a little bit warmer than today, we'll probably have that eventually let loose and, well, land right about there. Anyways, let's do the task at hand. Let's get this cut up and we'll see how we make out. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. 
open. Well, after about a half hour of slugging, that's what we ended up with. And I thought I was going to have a little bit more, so I don't know whether to call this 100% success yet. But I do know one thing. Got to pay attention to the distance between the front and the back part of the bobsleigh because I underestimated that length. I thought it was a little less than it was. I cut this material in half, probably could have left it either full length or cut it at about two thirds length. Use the top third for firewood, the bottom third to span the gap. But regardless, if we have a look here, most pieces are about five to six feet in length. That's sort of my first go around with this. You live and you learn. Next time, I think I'll make it a little bit longer. But then again, I don't exactly know what width I need for the trail yet. So we'll put this down and next round, we'll put it a little bit longer. We have a look here. We're left with a fair bit of scrap here. Turns out a lot of the wood that was underneath was just the, uh, just the edges. So I was doing a bunch of edging. I uh, since forgot about it and so it exposed itself when I started cutting. So we'll end up using that for firewood and put it in the IBC cages over there. Really, really good kindling in here. Most of this is gonna be fairly dry in no time. Anyways, we're gonna make our way over to that trail here. This wood I don't think is all that heavy, but I guess we'll find out. I've not really towed uh, any uh, logs of any weight on here yet. I've towed people on here and I can tell you there was definitely over a thousand pounds of people. When I had the top on this bobsleigh, and my old Scandic there pulled it without problems. But one thing I will tell you, this corner will be an issue. I know it for certain. When you get weight on with that Scandic, it'll pull it in a straight line, but don't expect to be making any sharp corners. So we got to go down that way and we got to somehow get the machine around this way. So you guys will see exactly how that works. I suppose we could go that way, but then it's quite a long trek back to the trail. So we'll try to make our way around this corner. Wish me luck. Here we go. Just when I think it's going good, what ended up happening was kind of funny, not really. I'm starting to go up the hill and obviously the pieces which were just long enough to span the gap from post to post, well, they obviously slid backwards and that's what you see. Anyways, glad I uh, caught this before I got to the top of the hill. We'll rejig this and uh, we'll keep rolling. Way it goes. was kind of deep but we made it anyways I learned a lot on that little trip first thing I learned was make sure I get the correct length pieces cut before I try loading it on here second thing I learned was I need to strap it down I don't know why I was thinking I didn't 
kind of brushed my mind maybe uh, just before we were leaving, but then I since forgot about it. And the third thing is make sure that the trail is good and packed before you try coming in here. Although we made it, you guys would have seen just a moment ago, it dipped down pretty good right there because it was so soft. So maybe coming through here a few times ahead of time would be good. But regardless, we're here. We got some pieces in place. I'm going to haul them off the back here, throw them down on the trail and call it good. Might have been a learning experience today. All right guys, well, we got her done here. I'd say we probably put in about 12 or 15 feet of, uh, I don't know if we'd call that a corduroy road, but that type of idea anyways. We got some slab wood used up. Normally it'd go to firewood or wood chips. This time around we're using it for something else. So I think I'll just continue this process as I cut more wood. Uh, just paying attention to stack it in a place where it's a little more easily accessible uh, as opposed to mixing it in with all those small pieces of uh, slab wood, the, uh, the edges. That way I don't have to sort it again next time. Might even just put this out next time I cut wood and take the slab wood right off the sawmill, load it right onto here. And that way I don't have to do any extra handling. But this thing worked really, really well. As you can see down here, there actually is a spot I could put a hook in order to run a strap over to this side and do the same with the front. I just plain Jane forgot. So next time around, we'll make sure and get that strap on. And uh, underneath the seat there on the Scandic, on the snow machine, there's actually a spot where I can store stuff like that, uh, straps and everything else. I just got to make sure to put it in there. So hopefully I remember from uh, the time I leave here till I get back to the shop and we'll get that done. But besides that, a few mishaps and that's more or less the way it goes. You guys who uh, get it right every time the first time, well, I can tell you you're better than me. This is the reality out here. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes you try. Today I'd say it was a half win, so worked out pretty well in the end. Anyways, uh, despite the struggles, I'm still happy to be out here every single day. If I wasn't happy to be out here, I certainly wouldn't be. But just have a look around. You guys see that? How can you go wrong? Sun's setting there, we got fresh snow, there's critters floating around in the woods here, it's nice and quiet. Life can't get a lot better, so definitely uh, happy you guys came along for that. Next time around, we'll be up to something. I'm not sure what that'll be, but I hope you come back for that. In the meantime, do me that big favor. Give her the old like a roo, subscribe, and, well, I'll see you next time. Take care.